Hey what's up guys and welcome back to another video on the channel Today we have got more stories, news to talk about um, Slightly later because there really isn't a lot to go on So it's gonna be a bit more chill um, conversation and stories to go through than usual obviously now that the Mbappe news is settling in and obviously we are at the time of recording actually um, today is what about a week now um, away from Euro 2024 so obviously it's going to be uh, more focus on the Euros but we'll get on to that later at the towards the end of the video but we start off with some club news, club football news. Starting off with the update, more updates. Of course, we've already had some updates yesterday, um, but today we've had more um, coming out from Lucky with this. Lenny Euro's preferred club seems to be Real Madrid. Manchester United have not given up, and he's still at the top of the list at PSG. Um, we know that Man United and PSG have been monitoring and have also been looking at Lenny Euro. Um, but let's see if this deal does happen. Um, because there have been many outlets saying that you know he does prefer Real Madrid over Manchester United or PSG. So let's see. But with a bit more um, coming out here. Um, which is Lille's plan was to drive the price up for Lenny Yo with a big European clubs all interested but the expected 40 million euros fee from his sale is expected to not be reached so you're probably looking at 30 25 30 which I think is an absolute bargain by the way I think that this season if we are going to sign three players and they're going to be Mbappe, they're going to be Davies, and it's going to be Lenny Euro. If you can go to Bayern Munich and Davies doesn't sign into a contract and say, look, it's now our terms, and you can negotiate a deal for, let's say, 35 million, you go to Lille, you negotiate for 30 million, that's 65 million euros for two young, one established, one still not quite established but two players for the future for the next five years minimally and on top of that i know mbappe you obviously it's not a free because people say it's a free but you're not paying a transfer fee to PSG, but you are paying that chunk of money to mbappe as a signing bonus across the five years but obviously you add it up you are getting mbappe Lenny Euro and Alfonso Davies for combined 200 million euros around. That is, I think, an absolute bargain. Now, look, money is money. 200 million euros is a lot of money. But you're signing arguably the best player in the world, the best left back on his day, and one very young, exciting centre back prospect. I do think that if you can negotiate with Lille, for 25 to 30 million 25 might be a bit out of hand a bit ridiculous but 30 million is totally cool i think that as lekeep has said they expected 40 million euros so if it's not going to be 40 um it might be 30 it could be 25 but i don't see that happening so maybe 30 million euros which i think is still a good fee for him and we got one more up there um Lenny Euro continues to prioritize Real Madrid despite interest from multiple Premier League clubs who are willing to spend more money and PSG from Mati Moreto and Cot off site so as the keep has already said it's the same piece of news priority preference is Real Madrid Clubs are interested, yes, I think you have got clubs interested. You have got 
your typical Manchester United. I think Chelsea might be interested. I wouldn't be surprised if teams like Arsenal and Liverpool might look at this deal because 25 to 30 million euros for a young center back is a steal. I really do think so. For this market, it's hard to find a player who's still, what, 19. He's certainly got 10 years in him. Obviously, he might not stay at one club for 10 years, but he's got four to five years at least with his next club. So I do think 25 to 30 million euros is a good thing. And obviously that is always PSG. Um, I'm surprised Bayern Munich aren't involved, but maybe it's not what they're looking at right now. But obviously there is a lot of interest. But it's good to know Real Madrid are the priority. I do think that's true. I don't think that's just paper talks. I don't think it's just fake stories. I do think that's true. But let's see what happens because I don't think he'll be playing the Euros, but I do think he'll be involved in the Olympics. So we'll see what happens there, but hopefully a deal gets to happen in the upcoming weeks. I don't think there'll be a, a rush because I don't think many teams will be making a, an offer. And can we just say that a few days ago, if I'm not wrong, there was a news that came out to say that Manchester United offers 60 million euros or pounds, right? And then you get this news from the keep. They are saying that they expect a 40. So it kind of tells you that you can't really be trusting everything you read. So obviously, if you, if you read something that says that a deal or an offer has been made, I would say trust us. I would say look for the source and see if it's reliable. Don't trust the source straight up. But moving away from Lenny Euro, because you know it's not a lot of fresh news there. We've got a player that's actually coming to Real Madrid, a young player who is going to be coming to Madrid finally after what two years of agreement. But it's Andrik, and he has spoken. Obviously, he will be joining Real Madrid in the summer. And this is what he has had to say. Andrik Mbappe, a different player, always scoring many goals for his club and also in two World Cups. Having him and Vinicius on the same team is amazing. But I know it will require a lot of work on my part to keep me at the same level. Um, a bit more. Um, Mbappe is an incredible player. I think it's always been a dream to play with him and now it will happen. I'm very happy and I hope it will be a beautiful story. And the funniest one, um, which is Mbappe is the best player on FIFA. I never take him off my ultimate team. But this isn't obviously the main point. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how the attack shapes up because we kind of forgot, and I, I, I did kind of forget that Andrik is joining um, because if you think about it Vinicius Junior, Rodrigo, Mbappe, Brahim Diaz, Arda Gula, and Jose Lu. that's six quality attackers that's six players who have done a lot and you add in Bellingham because he is essentially be playing in the attacking mid slash force line role you're looking at seven attacking players already. And if you add in Andrik, that's eight. That's the attack sorted for five to ten years. That really is. I mean, you take away Hosselu because he's in his 30s. You've got young players everywhere. I mean, Brian Diaz is still young. He's at 24, isn't he? 23, 24. Arda Gula is young. He's, in his, he's below 20. Basically, we've got a very, very young attack. But it's not 17 year olds. It's not. Yes, you've got Andrik coming in. But he's not the main attacker. He's going to be molded in. And I said this last year. When Benzema left. I said Real Madrid need the striker. Need a striker to come in who is more experienced to guide Andrik. And he comes in this season. He's not going to be the main choice. He might be 6th, 7th choice in terms of the attack. Because take away Benicia Jr., Rodrigo, and Mbappe, who will be able to guide him, 
We've got Hossil. I mean, he's in his 30s. He's got experience. Brian Diaz has got experience. You know, he's played for Man City, but he's went away to AC Milan. Certainly can get him. I think Bellingham will be able to help him out as well. Maybe not Arda Gula because he's still young. But they will be able to help each other out as well. So I'm thinking that this attack is absolutely stacked for the next 5 to 10 years. It really is. But let's see. I'm very, very excited, obviously, um, for this upcoming preseason to see these players come together, train, play, gel, get to know each other because obviously the best thing about Real Madrid that always defines Real Madrid that Real Madrid are able to get late goals and play so well and create history is the never give up mentality and the only way you can get that mentality is if the players are all on the same page everyone thinks the same way everyone gives their 100% Everyone fights to the end, fights to the final whistle. And in order to do that, the relationships between the players, the managers, the staff, everyone, all the players together as well, has to be strong. So when the, I don't think that Rodrigo will be totally upset, maybe being more of a rotational role that he will get. But obviously... He might be planning on his future, but we'll talk about that when the time comes. It will certainly, certainly not be this summer. But next up, a former Real Madrid player now, Tony Cruz. What is um, up with that? Um, wait, not Tony Cruz just yet. Um, it's actually Brahim Diaz. Speak of it. My bad. Apologies. Um, we will be talking about Tony Cruz just a sec. But I've got um, some bits on Brahim Diaz and also Mbappe but Brian Diaz's plan is to stay at Real Madrid and be patient for minutes the arrival of Mbappe doesn't change anything from the level and also after Kylian Mbappe's signing was made official meetings took place at Vodabebas with Ancelotti in some of them the message from Ancelotti regarding Mbappe is clear how is the player who scores one goal per game going to be a problem there are zero dubs from Jose Felix Diaz so that's that with Mbappe and obviously Brian Diaz, you know, not feeling threatened. Um, I wouldn't say not feeling threatened, but, you know, being more patient, right? Um, not feeling pressurized or upset or anything. And that's what I mean by squad relationships and harmony, really. Um, now we're going to talk about Tony Cruz. Um, why did I retire? Because I simply want to be remembered as the 34-year-old Tony Cruz who played his best season for Real Madrid. I did that. I see it as a compliment that many people think it's too early from Kicker, who um, are a German outlet. This is what we have been saying. You know, Tony Cruz is ending it on a high. He doesn't want to play again next season knowing that he will eventually not play much because age is catching up with him and as an athlete that is a time where you pick out and that is a time that you have to think about quitting on retiring um, and next season he will still get minutes if he stayed but you are thinking about this season as the transitioning season next season is supposed to be the year that you have already transitioned so Modric and Cruz would have already been transition they wouldn't be the main players in that team in that midfield so for Tony Cruz it is absolutely important to think about it from all factors in terms of ending it on a high in terms of being remembered for ending at a high and obviously playing at the highest level and you know if he goes off and retires with La Liga, Champions League, and pos possibly, potentially, the Euros, he will end his career off 
the best way possible. The best way possible. So I really do think that this isn't really based on um, he's just not feeling it. I really do think that if you would ask him to play for another year or two, he would totally be fine with it. I think he would have been fine with it at the start of the season. I really do think, but it feels like it is the right time. And that's fair enough. However, what is he going to be doing after retirement? Now, this is from Fabrizio Romano. Tony Cruz, I will spend time with my family mostly and I'll be working on my youth academy in Madrid as planned. The Icon League, which I founded with Elias Nelic, will also start in September, told the kicker. However, um, there was a bit of a drama because some people thought that he will be working with Real Madrid's academy. Now, if you don't know, Tony Cruz has his own academy, right? Um, I think it's called the Tony Cruz Academy, and it's letting um, children around eight to eight and above um, join the league, join the academy, and obviously um, get to meet Tony Cruz as well. But People thought that he would be talk. He, he was talking about the Real Madrid Academy. Nah, it's not. It's his own. Um, and the Athletic have confirmed that Tony Cruz will not work in Real Madrid's academy. The quote was misinterpreted by the media. Cruz gave the interview too. I assume that's a German media because he did talk to Kicker that he will work in his academy that is in Madrid. So his academy is located in Madrid because he stays in Madrid. Um, and he's founded this academy for a few years now, I believe. So, nothing to do with Real Madrid. It's his own academy in Madrid. Um, on to the end off with this. Um, this is the new kit, as we have already discussed. But the font and the name looking beautiful. And I want to end off um, as well with two more news. Firstly, Lionel Messi. Who would have thought we'd be talking about Messi on here but he has spoke and this came at a very interesting time I didn't expect this didn't I don't think anyone did but here's what Lionel Messi had to say Lionel Messi best team in the world Real Madrid the current European champions if we talk about results Real Madrid is the best if we're talking about performance wise Manchester City led by Pep is the best from Infobay um Cool, thanks. Okay, like, look, does what Messi say have any effect or effect or changes anything? No, it doesn't. If Messi believes that Real Madrid are the best team in the world, but Man City are the best playing team in the world, I don't think anyone cares. I don't think any Real Madrid fans cares. Because Real Madrid have won the Champions League, have just won the Champions League, and Man City haven't, at least not this season. So, you know what? Fair enough. Fair enough. You know, Messi can say what he wants. Totally um, cool. Now, I'm going to end off with some Euro squads that have been officially confirmed. If I'm not wrong, I got England, Germany, and Spain. The first one I have is England. Now, this is their final 26-man squad. Now, a few players were left out. Some of them were understandable. Um, the likes of Madison. I thought, you know, I do think that Madison would be better than Eze. But Eze has just been playing more consistently and have been performing consistently as well. So you have to take him. So that I don't think there's a spot for James Madison. Um, those left out as well. Jack Grealish, is he better than Anthony Gordon right now? No. So I think Grealish leaving is kind of expected. Um, Maguire is no longer there. So look, is it a surprise? No, because he's injured. But I thought Jack Brentford deserved to go. So... There's that, but this team looks absolutely stacked. One of the favourites, yes, 
but I don't think that they should be the favourites. And there are many, many bookies out there that are putting England as favourites. They are not. I personally don't think they are. I think that France should be favourites. And then it's probably Portugal, then England. I do think that Portugal and England are just about equal. But I think France should be clear favourites. I really do think. And if you look at the path as well, the pathway... Um, realistically, you know, England, in order to win it, they had to beat France. Do you really think England will beat France? For me, I don't think so, but hey, may, might just be me. Germany, um, looking good. Um, this is very different than usual Germany teams. You know, they've obviously left out some older players, Mats Hummels. For example, you can see it's one obvious player that they've left out. But I like the look of Germany. I think that the defence is looking good. I think that, you know, obviously you have got Neuer and Ter Stegen battling. I think Neuer will definitely play. Schlotterbeck played well in the Champions League final. Of course, Rudiger as well. Kimmich and Mittelstadt. The midfield looks very good now that Tony Cruz is back. And the attack, you've got Florian Wirtz and Jamal Musiala. You've got two of the young prospects in the tournament in the same team. You can't mess it up, really. And the attack, you know, in the past, it was Timo Werner as the main striker, wasn't it? Um, so, you know, I'm nothing against Timo Werner, but, you know, the diverse option now. You've got Ty Havertz, who has been playing really well at Arsenal in the nine. But they have got Nicholas Fulkrook, who's been scoring some goals for Dortmund. So, they've got some options there. And we've got Spain. Um, with a very interesting squad. Now, some players who didn't go. I think three players were dropped today. I'm trying to think who they were. It was, I remember Paul Kubasi. Not a surprise, he's, what, 17 um, he'll probably go for the Olympics. I think Marcus Lorente was dropped, if I'm not wrong. And there was another player who was dropped, but I can't remember. Um, I'm trying to think, who, who is it? Who is it that was dropped? But anyways, um, I'm, I'm thinking a midfielder though. Um, I'm trying to think his name. I can't remember his name. I was thinking to myself, that guy should have gone. Anyways, I know it's a midfielder, but I have no idea what his name is. Anyways, this team, I don't think this team will go very far. I think that they will make it out of their group. I think their group is quite tough. You've got Italy and Croatia. They should be able to beat Albania. They should be able to go to the next round. I think they will make it to the quarters. Really, the quarterfinals, and they'll probably go out. I think that Spain right now. Um, I look at this team. Um, defensively, it looks all right. You've got some new names um, compared to you know the previous Spain generations, in terms of you know the likes of Lenormand and Daniel Vivian coming in, even you know Unai Simon, Alex Grimaldo, the midfield. With Rodri as the 6. Looking good. The attack is the problem. I just don't think they've got enough finishes. So there's that. But let me know what thoughts are down below. Of everything we've talked about. Hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. Hit the notification. Subscribe to the channel already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.